Hello, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Lucy and I'm going to be facilitating this Art for All group with St Christopher's Hospice today. I'm a creative artist and I normally run an art group this afternoon, that, um, on Tuesday afternoon that meets every Tuesday. Um, with the lockdown we've moved online and we've been trying to have an art group every Tuesday to keep up the continuity of that group. So last week, some of you might have tuned in and saw that the theme of the, the week was a, a room with a view and I very quickly drew uh, the view from my living room and I used, did the window as well. So I wanted to show you the update. So I added a little bit more to that. So. I'll move it a bit closer to the camera. So it's still a little bit rough, but what I did was I actually added some charcoal in. And uh, to do this, I will, <laughs> you know exactly how I managed that in a minute, but I just wanted to um, share with you a few artists who use charcoal. Um, so I'm gonna try and share my computer screen. So I'll do that just now. And okay, I'll minimize that, and maximize this, and there we go. So we have um, this first um, this first drawing that's done in charcoal, and I'm sure all of you are aware, but I'll give a, a quick um, explanation of what charcoal is. Charcoal is wood that's been put in a fire essentially and heated up to a really really high degree. Sometimes pressure is put on it as well. You can get kind of blocks of charcoal, but you can also get willow charcoal that is made of willow and is just looks like tiny charred branches. And you can get quite thick pieces, they're about that thick, you can get really, really thin pieces. And charcoal is like chalk pastels, it rubs off as soon as you, um, if you touch it, it, so it can melt away. But it can also, if you use charcoal dust, it can, um, it can sort of stick to the paper and create a base that you can then work off of. And as you can see from this first piece, which was done in 1914, um, you can see from the title, Study for Returning to the Trenches, charcoal is very often used um, as a preliminary study. People um, might do a quick sketch in charcoal, make it a bit more so solid and build up some tones, and then they might use that as their, their I suppose their, uh, what word am I trying to, use? Their, their jumping off spot, their springboard um, for a painting that they might do. So professional artists might do that. Um, here we can see that um, these kind of like really swift charcoal lines are showing these soldiers that are all kind of piling on, re returning down to the trenches. And um, this piece would have been, I'm not sure if he was actually officially part of the Vorticist movement, but um, the Vorticists were around at the start of World War One. I. I think at the start of the World War, they thought, yes, let's embrace modern machinery and uh, embrace the kind of um, the chugging engine of warfare. And by the end of the war, I think they were slightly disillusioned um, with, uh, with uh, man as machine and also perhaps with, with vorticism. So that, that's why um, Christopher Richard Wynne Nevinson and it's um, part of the Tate collection. And um, so the next piece I'm going to show you is quite different. And this is a self-portrait by Kathy Kolwitz in, done in 1934. And Kathy Kolwitz was born, I think in 1876. I might be getting the date wrong. Um, she, she lived in Berlin with her husband who was a doctor and she I think lived through the first world war they lived through the second world war and um was uh, I think had left Berlin by the time of the second world war and I think lost people in both world wars so, but her style can she used charcoal a lot and did um and her style was really influenced by German expressionism so you can see here this isn't necessarily sort of the most realistic we will be coming on to very very realistic charcoal portraits that you, in just a moment this is you can still tell it's her if you saw a photograph of her but it kind of exaggerates the expression so 
her eyebrow is emphasised and the shadows are emphasised and some bits can almost disappear into darkness and into abstraction and this is something that she played with as she changed mediums as she went on in her career so she ended up doing printmaking and uh, lithographs and simplifying her style down but it started off in these charcoal sketches and um, yeah I think I suppose I, I quite like them I think they're really potentially a bit bleak but also really beautiful as well and the way that the line is captured in the charcoal is very interesting. Um, next we have um, a very recent piece, um, this is the Machine Man 1 by Arinza Stanley who's a Nigerian artist and um, it, this is a charcoal picture. Um, you could look at this and think that this was a photograph but it's not, it's done over a very long period of time, I'd imagine weeks, with charcoal. And Arinza Stanley was a Nigerian artist and um, this, um, I suppose, this, I suppose, trend for hyperrealism started in Nigeria, maybe in about 2014, maybe 2015, and it's grown and grown since then. So there's this, um, there's, there's a fairly large group now of Nigerian artists who are exploring hyperrealist portraiture particularly and kind of what that means in terms of how do you capture your subject and kind of pushing it beyond realism to then hyperrealism is kind of creating a statement in this extreme realness so it's not just a man standing there it's a man standing there and he's dripping with oil because he's a machine which maybe takes us a bit back to um christopher nevinson at the start the first image that I showed you, man as machine, here we have man, is he in the machine? Is he cog in the machine? Is he standing up against the machine? Yeah, this is the kind of things that this hyperrealism kind of prompts us to think a, bit, a little bit more. And hyperrealism came to global prominence when uh, Kevin Hart, a, an, an American comedian, um, an artist in Nigeria um, did a hyperrealist portrait of him and it was shared on social media and then Kevin Hart publicised it and loads of celebrities in Hollywood wanted um, wanted portraits done by Nigerian artists so it's getting much more known internationally. But yeah, so moving on to the next image. Again, this is a very different image, um, one fairly recently though, 1998 I suppose that's over 20 years ago now, um, which I can't quite believe. But this is uh, by Vijay Kermins, and I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, and it's Night Sky 19. So this is done again in charcoal. Uh, it's very different to the last hyper-realist image. This you could almost be looking out of like a skylight in a ceiling at night, some weather on a lot of other lights about, and just this expanse of stars that is made by um, and I don't know how she, exactly she's done it, whether she's left all these tiny little white dots or whether she's gone back in with a technique I'll show you in a minute um, and made them herself. So, but it, yeah, I get really very, very simple and very, very effective use of charcoal that is just the end result, the end picture. And I think that's what we've seen with the last three images. The first one was study. These are all the intended image. And this is um, by Hauso Oguri and um, it's an example of sumi a which is another way that charcoal can be used so charcoal ash is um, mixed with um, with water and um, so it's very very densely packed to create an ink but it, the ink is made of charcoal and sumi a paintings they capture the spirit of the subject rather than its appearance so idori is kind of like um it's how best to describe it. I think it's um, when people find um, local plants and local um, sort of pieces of their environment to garnish plates and to add to add to a, to a dish to kind of garnish and to make beautiful but this kind of feeling of kind of yeah spontaneity and using a long brush and um, the, uh, the technique was first used by um, Zen Buddhist monks and requires really intense concentration, but you get this very spontaneous result. So, and that's the end of the slideshow today. So <laughs> I'm going to um, talk to you a little bit about how you can use charcoal. Um, I'm also going to start off by saying 
I don't actually have any charcoal at home. I don't know where it is uh, because because of working at home, um, lots of stuff's been moved around in my house and uh, I've had to make my own charcoal. So what I've done is I've got some long handled cooks matches. You could use shorter matches, um, but be careful of your fingers. I lit the match and then I let it burn and I've got another one slightly longer and then I just and let it cool and then I used it as charcoal and to draw and that is actually what I added to this so this is I've got the darker shades here so I'm adapting <laughs> to um, being able to find different things in lockdown so I'll show you some techniques so you could just use this nothing to be aware of the charcoal and lots of dust so you could use this just lines and then adding another little bit of cross hatching there you could also use the charcoal Oops. the other thing about charcoal is it tends to snap but if it does completely break then what I'm doing is I'm actually using my finger. So this is this match is completely disintegrated. And this might actually be what um, Lydia Kalmins did and possibly what Arunza Stanley may have done for some sections of his image to use charcoal dust to create a base. And I'm going to try and rub it all in so it doesn't get on my carpet. So it's a, it's quite, if you like getting your, your hands messy, then charcoal is a good material to use. Right. One to be careful of if, you, if you're not so good with dust, um, or if you have difficulty breathing with dust. But. So now I have this, and I could then layer more lines on that. But what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm going to get a rubber and, What we now have is some lines. So what you could do if you were doing a study of the window, what you can actually do is rather than draw in the dark, you could make the entire piece of paper dark and then get the light bits, just rub them out with a rubber. So kind of doing it in reverse and pick out all the highlights or the lightest parts of the drawing with the rubber. That's actually a really different way to look at something and really interesting. And I've done these little dots here as well. I'm going to try and see if I can get a Vija Kalman's kind of effect by going back in, narrowing down. I might be able to or I might not. It might require a bit more, a bit more practice. So what's actually interesting, which I didn't think would happen, so the bits that I've rubbed out there, I then rubbed the, the charcoal dust back over them and they've actually gotten darker. So that's another effect you can try. So um, yeah, you can use charcoal to draw absolutely anything you like. As you've seen, people use it to draw landscapes, people use it to draw concepts, if we're going with the um, Japanese piece, and people can use it to create hyper photograph like accuracy or to be really really expressionist so um if you want to share any charcoal drawings that you make if you happen to have charcoal at home or if you want to make your own match charcoal um i'd love to see what you make and until next week all the very best and uh stay safe sweet to you soon goodbye <laughs>